You are about to listen to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast, hosted by Craig Forrestal. Find Craig on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy. The That Sports Guys podcast is proudly featured by NFL Draft Diamonds, your draft coverage king. So sit back, relax, and enjoy some football talk. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. I am Craig Forrestal. You may know me from Twitter as at that underscore sports underscore guy. But with me this evening is North Dakota linebacker Jackson Turner. Jackson, what's happening? Hey, how you doing, Craig? I'm good. Thank you for making the time to be with us this evening. And I want to jump into something with you because you're from somewhere that I'm not too familiar with. I've always wanted to visit Minnesota, but I'm not too familiar with your town, Esco. So tell me, what was it like growing up in Esco, Minnesota? Um, Esco is a really small town. It's about 10 miles south of Duluth. Um, Not much goes on there. Uh, There was a gas station, got shut down. Um, We got... I mean, the main attraction is the school. Then there's a good four-way stop and a pizza place. That's about all we have. So it's not too exciting to grow up there. So but the summers are fun with the lakes. So are we talking like a town of 300 people, a town of 3,000 people? Um, 500 something. Oh, wow. So you're not, yeah. you're not kidding when you say it's a small town. No, it, it's very small. And – you mentioned something about one of the attractions being the high school in town. And I guess it's safe to say that you were the main attraction in town then with your high school athletic achievements. Just want to talk to you about the recognition you had from the Minnesota Vikings as they recognized you with their all state uh, recognition and team. And then also the deep playoff runs that you guided the basketball team to. So if you could just kind of maybe recap some of your high school athletic achievements. Um, yeah, so I got picked in that uh, for the, by the, Vi- the Vikings all football team. And that was a really cool experience going down uh, to UCF or TCF Bank Stadium and getting honored at halftime with all those other great players. And then um, I was also up with her in the running for Mr. Football, but I did, wasn't a finalist for that. But that was also a cool thing to be noticed for. And then uh, basketball-wise, yeah, all four seasons uh, I played at Esco. We made it to state. And then my sophomore year, we ended up winning the state championship. And I'll never forget that. That was a really cool experience. And now, what kind of guy were you on the basketball court? Because I played football and basketball in high school. And me and my football friends, we always said that if you played both sports, it's because you either want to hang out with your friends and stay in shape you're addicted to competition or you actually just are good and love basketball. Which one of the three was it for you? Um, I would say that my freshman and sophomore year, um, it was just cause I loved basketball. I played AAU every summer and, um, Esco was a good team. So I really thought that just like being good at basketball, Esco would, get me hype it, it throughout Minnesota, which really wasn't the case. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I really played because I thought I was good at basketball. But then as I got older, I realized I was better at football, which is what my parents had told me basically my whole high school career, but I never really listened. <laughs> but uh, like my role on the team freshman and sophomore year uh, was just being a good defender and facilitating the ball because we had really good uh, seniors and juniors both those years that were really good shooters. So I was just kind of the do-everything guy, but I didn't really score that much. And then as uh, my uh, junior and senior year, uh, after those guys left, it was kind of my role to score and do a lot more. So I had fun with high school basketball. And there was another highlight moment in high school that I want to ask you about. And you had a punt return where you were zigging and zagging, juking guys left and right, reversed field, ended up taking it to the house, and ESPN found it. 
Jackson, how did you find out that your punt return made it on ESPN? Um, so after that game, um, I found that or that video through our like I went on our huddle and got that film and like screen recorded it. Then I put it on my Twitter and I put like hashtag ESPN top 10 or whatever you do for that. Mm -hmm. And then like a week later, um, one of my teachers actually pulled it up in class and showed it. And that's how I found out about it. Oh, wow. That's super cool. So you're just sitting in class like, they're taking attendance and then all of a sudden they just put <laughs> you up on the big screen. That's actually really cool. Um, yeah. Now let's go ahead and let's focus on the end of the high school process for you, which is recruiting. Obviously we see that you're at North Dakota now, but while you were going through the process, who was kind of in the mix? Um. So some of the bigger schools that I talked to, I talked to uh, Minnesota and got offered a preferred walk on there. Um, I actually talked to Ole Miss over the phone, but I never was able to make it down there for a camp, so that kind of went away. And then for FCS, it was North Dakota, North Dakota State, and I'm trying to think who else, uh, South Dakota. And then, so this is a funny story. So when I was a sophomore, I had a pretty good relationship with uh, Coach uh, Kurt Weezy at UMD. Mm -hmm. And I told him that I was going to go there um, because that was just kind of like a dream I had was to play at UMD because it was right, basically it was right to my, my back doorstep. So I was like, oh, if I can play there, I'll play there. And then I started getting more recognition into my junior and senior year. So I started listening to those coaches. And then my final decision, obviously, was Grand Forks. And in high school, you played all over the field. I saw it was pretty heavy with wide receiver, running back, cornerback, safety, sprinkle in a little quarterback. How has all that helped you? transition to a full-time linebacker at the college level? Um, so when I got recruited to UND, um, Coach Schmidt uh, really talked to me about how he wanted his, like, like the most, he wanted, like, really athletic guys playing outside linebacker for him. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, dead set on playing wide receiver. I was like, if I want to do anything after college, I have to play wide receiver. And – Obviously, that didn't happen, and uh, so I played linebacker, and I didn't like it as much at first, but I learned to love it because we get to do so much in, the, in like, our defense. And just playing all those positions, uh, I think, like, knowing how people run routes, like, what quarterbacks are looking for and, like, the moves offensive players move to get open and things like that helps me in coverage. And then pass rush was a long learning curve for me. That took me a long time to kind of get down and get better at I still have a long way to go to become great at pass rush. But, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about that. And, Jackson, I wanted to stick on something that you mentioned in your last answer. And you talked about all the different things that you're able to do from the outside linebacker position. Can you talk about your level of comfort in the defense? And maybe if you could just talk a little bit about what it is that your role primarily functions as, as an outside linebacker in the defense. So in our defense, um, like as an outside, throughout the game, you play, you play against tight ends in the run game. You play against tackles in the run game. Obviously, obviously, pass rush. Um, you get to cover one on one. Sometimes just zone covering, um, running stunts and pass rush things like that. And then, in certain defenses, making calls to the insides and to the DNs and like telling them where to go. So like, there's a lot you have to learn, and it's definitely it was really hard at first. But now being here for my four years and getting the system down. 
um, it's become a lot more fun than challenging when it comes to game planning during the week of like how many different things you get to do, like what you're going to get to bring into the games. So that it's just, it's been a lot of fun. And Jackson, I want to ask you about all the different emotions that you went through probably from about March when the pandemic really started to hit all the way through the announcement that there would not be any fall ball. Um, just how have you been able to digest all of that and maintain your focus? Oh, well, I'd say at first when the pandemic hit, uh, so first, actually when the pandemic started, uh, it was, we went home for spring break and, um, we were home for about four days and then we got emails saying that we weren't allowed to come back to campus and that we were going to be home until probably June. And I actually went ahead and bought myself a dog <laughs> to, to occupy a little bit of my time. And then I started to like think more about like not being able to play or potentially not having a fall season. And for me, um, just like talking with my parents, my dad was an old, was a football coach for several years. And he just said, look at it as a way that you can get better and keep perfecting your craft. And this will just give you more time to prepare for things that you want to do with football. And you, if you take it, if you take this time seriously and don't slack that you can be even better going into this next spring season or fall season or whatever it was going to be. So that's a positive thing of having more time to get your body right and become better. And within that answer, you brought up the possible spring season. Has there been anything from the coaching staff to you or the rest of the team regarding workouts, lifting, anything like that to prepare for spring season? Um, so right now we are doing helmet-only practices, and then we're having workouts all week. And then at starting in October – we're going to have like a spring ball type thing, mm -hmm. which is in the fall. And our coaches have been really positive and letting us or telling us that they're pretty sure we're going to have a season. Everything they've heard has been positive coming back from uh, the Missouri Valley Conference. So I'm pretty confident that we'll play eight games in the spring. And I'm really excited for that. It'll be a little different, but I think it'll be fun. And I want to ask you as a multi-year starter, being named to the preseason all Missouri Valley football conference team. And you've also been identified by some websites and other draft outlets as a small school uh, prospect to know in this upcoming draft. How have you maintained focus with the increased attention that's coming right now with your game and your play? Oh, so I think with that, like it's obviously very exciting um, being recognized as a uh, first team all conference for the Missouri Valley because it's a great conference to be a part of and the competition is incredible. So like being picked for that was really humbling. And um, just as for being noticed by like uh, websites for like, as to be known for the draft day and things like that, like it, I think it's super cool and it's like been a dream of mine but I feel like I still have more to prove to get to that point. So I try not to think about it as much and just if I do the right things and be the best player I can be, then everything will fall in line. And then the final football based question that I have for you, Jackson is about your individual accomplishments. The next time you touch the field, because since North Dakota has transitioned to division one back in 2008, you have the fourth most sacks in that time frame since they've been a Division One school. So individually, what else do you hope to accomplish? Um, well, I want to be the all-time leading. Uh, uh, I want to have the all-time record for sacks at UND. That's definitely a dream of mine. Um, other than that, I just want to help our team. I would love to win a conference championship, beat NDSU, and then play for a national championship because since I've been here, we haven't, we've got to the playoffs, but haven't won a playoff game. So if I, if we could do that as a team for 
the city and for the university. I think that'd be a really cool, cool thing. And Jackson, that's going to do it for the football based questions. You ready to jump over to the other side and give the people a chance to get to know you away from the field? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the first question that we have is if you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, if you could say anything to the world for 30 seconds, what would it be? Um, it would definitely be based on uh, the poli- um, police brutality and things that are going on in America. That's what I would definitely focus all of my 30 seconds on. I try to say as much as I could in that 30 seconds, whether it's with voting, um, police brutality, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, that's what I would that was what I would focus on. Absolutely. And now we'll go to another question for you. And this one is, if you could close one fast food restaurant because the food is nasty, what would it be? Ah, gosh. I was trying to think about this when you asked me earlier. But I'd probably say KFC. I really like, like, fried chicken and stuff. But I think that Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. and Popeye's mm-hmm. just do it so much better that it's not even worth going to KFC. And I- Like, KFC. If you, if you go to KFC and get chicken instead of going to, like, Popeye's or Chick-fil-A, like, I just think that's kind of a waste. I'm with you. I agree. I can't fight you on that one. I'm the same yeah. exact except way. For the, except for the mashed potatoes. If they could take the mashed potatoes and put them somewhere else. <laughs> then, then, then because that's the those thing, are good. That's the only thing you got to bring yeah. with. <laughs> yeah. So, Jackson, you were just picked to star in your own TV comedy show. And your first thing that you have to do is pick two actors to be your TV mom and dad. Who's it going to be? Well, my TV mom 100% would be Jennifer Aniston because she's timeless. Everyone loves Jennifer Aniston. My TV dad would probably be Will Ferrell because I think he's hilarious. And, uh, yeah, I just think that would be hilarious. I think he'd be so funny to have around. But another TV dad that I also think would be funny to have around is Kevin Hart. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So Or Dave Chappelle. Oh. Like, I can't pick between those three. Like, one of those three would be really funny. So either way, you're going with someone that's going to have, have you laughing the whole time as your TV dad. Yeah, because, like, usually your mom's pretty, like, strict and she's always on you about something, but then your dad's, like, the fun one. <laughs> so you got to have, you got to have, like, that balance, you know what I mean? <laughs> I definitely understand you there. And now, Jackson, if you were going to stay up all night talking to someone about something, what is that something? What are you most likely to stay up all night talking about? Uh, this is a good question because it made me think back to all the like away trips we take mm-hmm. and the linebackers always go to one room and talk about something every night. And probably one of the most intense conversations we had was the supply of water in the world. We talked about it for like two and a half hours about when the world's going to run out of water and how much water the world uses and things like that. And like natural resources, which kind of sounds lame, but like everyone got into it and was super serious about it. That is a so, deep conversation for a bunch of it, linebackers <laughs> to have on a road trip. I'll tell you that. It really, it really was deep. And it was, at, it was at, uh, I'm trying to think where we were playing. Oh, I think, I think it was at uh, Cal Poly last year, mm. but yeah. It was it was intense. We were getting after each other. We were looking stuff up online, trying to find facts <laughs> to disprove other people. It was it was good. And now, Jackson, think back to growing up and when you got put to work around the house. What was your favorite chore that you had to do? For me, it was laundry. I love to do the laundry. I could do that all day, every day, no complaints. What was it for you? Um. So when I was a kid, I was motivated by chocolate, mm-hmm. like Hershey Kisses and uh, Reese's. Mm-hmm. And whenever I would go to my aunt and uncle's house, I would always sweep the floors and like wipe the floors down because I hate stepping on things. With, like if I'm not wearing socks, I hate walking around the house and stepping on like crumbs mm-hmm. or like sand and things like that. So I would always try to clean the floors and I would always find where the broom was and clean the floor so I could get chocolate. And so that I want to be stepping on anything gross. 
Hey, you know what? Everyone's got to have that motivation. And you know what? You you were just smart. You knew where to get the chocolate when you were a kid. Hand me the broom. Yeah, it was always for a reason. Nothing. I never did anything for just, just to do it. <laughs> hey, if you're going to do it, do it 100%. Don't blame you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for us on this episode of That Sports Guys podcast. You just spent the last couple of minutes getting to know North Dakota linebacker Jackson Turner. Ladies and gentlemen, he's Jackson Turner. I'm Craig Forrestal. Until next time, stay safe and be easy. Hey, everybody. Craig Forrestal. Thanks for tuning in and listening to another episode of That Sports Guys podcast. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at that underscore sports underscore guy to catch all the latest updates and podcast episodes. Until next time, stay safe and be easy.